Well, ladies and gentlemen, from the south, get ready with the Mexican wave. And here is Richard Clark. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Here's a site you've been waiting for, Avro Vulcan XH558. Magnificent site for running down the ground line. see the manoeuvrability as Martin brings her back in again right towards you putting some power on Fighting a, a, sorry, like flying a fighter aircraft, and certainly you see from that performance there, and the way she turns back into the crowd line, how dramatic and maneuverable she is. As the crew bring her back in again, you can see the gear down, tiny wheels compared to the aircraft itself, but they do the job they're supposed to. She'll be doing a, what's called a missed approach, not to land of course, but to come in fairly low and fairly slow, right down the cloud line, right in front of you. And you can hear the beautiful sound of those Olympus engines.
please show your appreciation for the Admiral Vulcan. such as the Sunderland and the Catalina were acquired. successor to the DH-84 Dragon. They built a, a much larger aeroplane, a four-engine aircraft called the DH-86 Express, and basically combined the two designs into this. Same slender, pointed, elegant wings of the DH-86, with very much the fuselage design and twin-engine layout of the DH-84. Pete Cosgrove just coming into land in the Avro 19. Collections aircraft built by Avro in 1946. It's on the post-war production. They were used as airliners and commuters. today in British European Airways markings. It's owned by Phil Meeson. Capable of carrying a pilot, a single seat cockpit in the very front of the nose, and eight passengers. Gypsy 6s gives the aircraft a maximum speed of 157 miles. 
miles an hour. Now, if you consider that the Anson, the monoplane Anson, a lot more modern looking design, with 420 horsepower Cheetah 17s, ah! is only capable of 188 miles an hour. There's only 30 miles an hour difference between the biplane and the monoplane.
wing, you can see it's got full span slats. And then the trailing edge has got great big flaps and the ailerons are also true to increase the flap area. By Reinhold Muse, um, the technical director at Fiesler. Eric Backham. Backham went on to design some remarkable aeroplanes, including a rocket-powered interceptor. Fiesler Storch, first flew in 1936, and it's powered by a 240 horsepower Argus AS-10. And that's an inverted V8 engine. Is it quite a snow? short takeoff and landing you could land right next to the battlefield and get your wounded out of there very very quickly a great big long undercarriage now watch as he touches down how far those wheels retract very long springs and he stopped in what 60 yards amazing so just imagine we're in the western desert on the German side, we're watching the development of a tank battle. And this aircraft is taking off, he's directing artillery, he's talking to the tank commanders, telling them where the British troops are, the British forces are, and he's turning them left and right and so on. Now, of course, our forward air controllers and our army personnel also have a small machine gun. He's going to try and take the storage out. Running 
continued from the far side of the airfield, the Vic, of pre-war trains being led by the Mars Magister, 130 horsepower Gypsy Major, maximum speed of 130 miles an hour. As we're looking at it at the moment, on its left, the Tiger Moth, another Gypsy Major, same engine, 130 horse, maximum speed of 109 miles an hour. And then on the inside of the turn, a beautiful average shooter. Nearly twice the horsepower of the other aircraft. 240 horsepower Armstrong Sydney Links. Because even with that much bigger engine, it only manages 122 miles an hour. Pulling up to the vertical over the top. Executing a very neat lap, it seems, in the Provost. That's a lovely slow roll. One of the most difficult aerobatic maneuvers to fly, if you believe the slow roll, it doesn't look like much, does it? But your hands and feet are, have to be perfectly coordinated to get it right. Soviet Air Force and the Warsaw Pact Air Force. Well, this was a single seat development of that same design, intended purely for competition aerobatic flying. Nice crooked loop there, going from the B axis onto the A axis. In aerobatic terms, the A axis runs right to left in front of you, and the B axis runs towards and away from you.
in front of you, in fact, is one of them, the Bristol Blenheim. But their Hawker Hinds were wearing out. They needed a replacement, slightly higher performance. Hawkers beefed up the engine and the structure and produced the Hawker Hind.
slightly unmistakable sound there. 1,655 horsepower from the Merlin 70 series. Beautiful sound. It's been far fine today with its original service engine. That's how good the 70 series was. Started up in front of the tower, but listen to how quiet and how well maintained those engines. 
things are. They are beautiful things. Unsung hero 
players of the Second World War, the Bristol Blenheim. Designed by Frank Barnwell, first flew on the 12th of April 1935. Bristol have actually set out to design a twin engine light passenger aircraft. Type one four two. The prototype of this was Chris Prince first, installed by Lord Rotherman. And when they realised what they created, it was faster than any fighter of the day. donated the prototype to the nation and allowed the Royal Air Force to test it. They then went to Bristol's and said, well, that's absolutely super. Any chance of a bummer version? And that is how the Blenheim was born. Thank you. 